What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. It's your boy, Chris D, a.k.a. Willy Wonka, a.k.a. Doobie Man, a.k.a. Neo. Back in the motherfucking house with another stream of consciousness. What I want to talk about in this stream of consciousness is why you, and by you I mean African-American male, are probably not going to be able to find the woman of your dreams. I know that sounds rough. But let me explain what I'm talking about. The majority of the good women, and by good women, I'm talking about good women, They I break those down into one or two categories. I should do a stream about the categories that I break these women down into. But good women, I break down into two categories. One, in which you have to pay for dates and babysitting shits and those type of things. But generally, she's not asking for anything you're just giving her things because you know she needs it and then two those that literally ask for money for their time right they're not prostitutes they're just really good women and they're really beautiful and they don't want a relationship the reason why they don't want a relationship is because what they find is that most men once they settle into a relationship they no longer want to do the things that they did before when they were trying to get them to be the girlfriend. You know what I mean? Like they don't want to take them to nice places or give them extra money. Most men only do that for their girlfriend or the side chick. The main woman is the one that gets shit on. A lot of Dominican women understand that, and that's why many don't want to be the main girl. What we run into problems is as American men, We are taught that our main girl is our queen. Our main girl is our rock, our support, the one that gets the money. You know, I know a lot of brothers that come home and just, well, I mean, you don't get literal paychecks anymore, but you know how that go, where a nigga come home, put his paycheck on the table, go in the living room, watch TV. And then the wife is the one who handles those bills. Here, the dynamic is not that way. Because of this, the women that fall into those two categories normally do not advertise their services on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and Dominican Cupid. The majority of the women that you're going to find on Dominican Cupid fall into the category of bad girls. And again, I would have to do a whole other stream to break down bad girls, but if you do happen to find a woman on Cupid... It may come across as disingenuous uh, because she's constantly asking you for money. And you, as an American man, you're like, I don't even live there. Why would she be asking me for money? What she's doing is she's asking for a retainer. She's asking you to curry good favor with her so that way when you come here, she'll be that much more loving towards you And then you will never have any problems with her. She's not going to argue. She's not going to fuss or complain when you don't call her. She would prefer that you don't, you know, because you don't live here. Now, I want you to compare that to me who actually lives here. The only difference between what I go through and what you go through is that I have something in exchange. I can exchange my English classes, and even sometimes, depending on how beautiful the woman is, that don't even work. She's like, yeah, okay, whatever, good that you teach English, but that got to do with me, (laughs) you know? I've dealt with women like that too. And so then, what you have to understand as a black man is that, one, without Spanish, you lost. You might meet some interesting women, but as far as trying to settle down, Unless you plan on making an investment for the next year, two, three years, however long, before you get tired of her, then you're playing yourself by chasing that. Because ultimately what she's just going to do is just keep coming at you in different ways to try to get that money. I know that might be hard to hear. And I know that's not what a lot of men want to hear, but what I'm trying to do is be honest and real with brothers about their chances of meeting good women when they come out here. I don't want there to be no misconceptions about what you're getting yourself into. 
your concept of a good relationship has to change. If you if you have a girl and you consider her to be your main girl and she got other niggas, you got to be okay with that. There's nothing that you can do about it because you are not doing everything that she considers needs to be done in order for her to live a safe, satisfying, and happy life. And it doesn't change. If this is a beautiful, beautiful woman, as long as she is doing what she has to do to maintain that beauty, she's going to be the same way in her 20s, her 30s, and her 40s. Only difference is that when she reaches her 30s and 40s, she's a pro. She done dealt with niggas like you, and you don't even know it. And so she's going to make you feel like you that guy. She's going to make you feel loved. She's going to make you feel like, like she's really into you. She got all the pictures ready to go, to send to you. <clears throat> you don't know if that picture was taken six months ago, a year ago, or yesterday. you just happy she's sending you pictures. She's making you feel special. That's because she got experience doing that. And as long as you're willing to fall into that game and treat it as such, like this is a game, but she's just really, really good at it. So I have to play the part or the role of the provider. As long as you're okay with playing that role, you and her going to get along fine. It's only when you try to change your role or change her role is when there's problems. If you think back to any Dominican woman that you've dated. So this part is for the brothers that have come here a couple of times. Most times, the time that you fall out is because you said no about sending her money. Only when the status quo changes is when you start to experience turbulence. If you don't bring up nothing, she not going to bring up nothing. And that's how a lot of these relationships work. Regardless if it's why was you out late last night or who was you with like i don't even get into none of that shit with none of the girls i deal with the only thing i tell them is that i would recommend i'm telling you what i tell my girls i would recommend you get off cupid because you're not gonna meet another nigga as real as me <laughs> i'll just be straight up with them i mean how many other niggas here can speak english and spanish i just break it down for them so you can stay on Cupid, but it's just going to be niggas asking you for nude photos and shit. <laughs> You're not going to meet no better American nigga than me. That's what I tell them. And most of them get off of Cupid. That's why none of my hoes on Cupid. You know what I'm saying? I do got some that be checking in. And I've talked about this before in previous stream of consciousnesses. <laughs> where it'd be like a work shift and I just nod to them, tell them good morning, good luck, happy fishing. <laughs> Because that's what they're doing. They're going fishing. Fishing for dumb niggas. What we do with this stream of consciousness, with all of these, is trying to give you some insight. Trying to give you uh, a way through the back door, pause, so that you can move a little bit better. That's my whole goal, is not allowing those women to get over on my brothers. And not allowing my brothers to get cold hearted because they fall into that trap of falling in love and then trying to lock old girl down and her not being with it. It's all right to let her be free. Imagine you got a ranch. And imagine you got horses on your ranch when you bought the ranch. Beautiful horses. They come up and, and then they feed. They'll eat out of your hand. But they free. You don't know where the fuck they be going at night. Some days you come out, there ain't no goddamn horses at all. You like, where the fuck them horses go? You don't know. And then the next day you come out, there they are. Like, ain't shit never happened. Now, once you try to build a fence around them horses, they're going to be escaping every day. Again, I'm a country boy, so a lot of my analogies come down to country shit. As soon as you try to corral them horses, they're going to be jumping over the fence. You're going to have to make eight foot, nine foot. I mean, who, who wants that eyesore on their property? Nobody. The reason that those horses are responding that way is because now they feel trapped. Whereas if you just leave the gate down, yeah, they might not come home tonight, but they'll be, they'll be back. Because they understand that you are the one that's feeding them. 
Now, they might go, go out looking for other sources of food, but ultimately they're going to come back to what they know, what they're comfortable with. In this way, over the course of three months, six months, she's going to see, as these other niggas fall off, that you was the one that was there the whole time. And that is why I think that a lot of brothers are not going to be able to find out what they're looking for. Because they're not going to hear this podcast. But you did. And congratulations to you because you got one up on them hoes now. <laughs> That's all I got for this week, man. I hope you boys have a good day. Stay safe. Stay positive. Catch you on the next one. Peace.